Father, one more time, we have assembled before your presence. From the beginning of the year, you have been teaching us from the book of Genesis under the Rehoboth season series. This last Sunday of 2021 is the end of all that you have taught us. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ that wherever we will meet outside this room, where we need to produce the practical behavior of what we have learned in the book of Genesis, may you remind us May the Holy Ghost prompt us, for it will be in vain when we cannot live and worship you according to your precepts that you lay down in the book of Genesis. Then all our worship and all our toil in your house will be in vain. Therefore, now that we have understood the reason why you allowed Moses to write the details, what we call the book of Genesis, May we, Father, have understanding and clothe us with the grace so that in every situation in our lives, we shall worship and magnify your name and live our life by the principles of your word. Then it shall be well with us. Therefore, bless us this morning also as we go through this last portion. And we thank you for your mercy upon this assembly, for lifting us up to behold wondrous things in thy law. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we are getting close, and we are actually closing the Rehoboth season series, which we started with the book of Genesis. Period in the life of a Christian which remains forever where at a certain point in time the enemy cannot continue to hinder us anymore. Rehoboth season, now the Lord has made room for us and we shall today and tomorrow future be fruitful in this land. This is how Isaac gave the information of the third well, which the Philistines could not fight with him anymore. And that is a stage in which the believer is in as you progress from today and tomorrow and tomorrow. Because God himself is the one who stayed the Philistines away. And God himself today is alive who will always stay every physical and spiritual Philistine away, that the progress of the believer will be confirmed. I shall be fruitful in this land. And when this becomes your mantra, you wake up every morning and you are praying and you make sure whatever handle in front of you, you speak these words over them. No matter how the devil will try to create hindrances, those hindrances will be moving away Mm. because the prophetic word upon our lives in the name of Jesus Christ is that we shall be fruitful in this land. Words are spirits and the devil use words. I've told you in the devil's kingdom, they call it incantations. They speak words for their gods. So when a fetish priest is performing his works, he say things and say things for their gods and poor things. You also a believer, your incantation is your words of prayer. So as you repeat these things and because your words of prayer come from a higher God, it will break the ones of the powers of the devil. So that those ones that you have spoken from God's word become the one that covers around you. So wherever we go, there will be no Philistine that can stand you. They will rise up, but they will fall. Mm. They will chase you, but they will return. Because God's word said that you are in Rehoboth season. We read in the 17th verse, 
where we saw that Dan has been given the mandate as a serpent and as an adder, and he has been given the gift of using his mouth to buy the heels of the horse so that the rider on the horse will fall backwards. We explain it all together. They are all proverbs. The horse is a power that carries the rider. The rider is the enemy. And then Dan will rise up secretly and use his words in prayer to conquer the power, the horse upon which the rider is using to come and attack Israel. It was a wonderful prophetic words that God gave to the mouth of Jacob to speak to Dan so that Dan can be one of the serious victors in Israel. It means that the believer does not show himself openly against the enemy. We don't quarrel in public. We don't fight in public. We do our fighting on our knees in a secret. Using the words that God has given us to break down the horses, the spiritual horses that riders are standing on to fight us. So I don't expect to see a born again believer on the compound of a tenant of, of a, of a, of a multi-tenant houses fighting with each other, raising their voices and holding the necks of their wives and their husband to beat them. We don't do that. When your husband is fooling around with other women, a woman, a sister will not wake up and take a taxi, go to the place and beat that person profusely so that it becomes a, a police case. It is not done. You fight your battles in the, in the, in the, in the, in the in inside. That the spirit that is ruling your husband will break before you realize she has come back to normal senses. But believers, we see them in all the churches and so forth. I'm going to fight my rival, Abu Frano, I've, 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 I've handled my husband, we have suffered, ah, now that things are well. This small girl wants to stop my hand, you will see, go, 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 policeman, policeman, come, come. It's useless. It's useless. We fight battles on our knees. And brother, sister, it works. It works. So we need to get that character of them. To flow through our lives. That we are cool. But we are powerful in secret. Mm. So now moving forward to the closing of this topic. We are in the done effect. The second portion. If you look at it very carefully. Jacob I told you. Has become the representation of God. Whatever Jacob says. Comes to pass. So the gathering of all the children of Jacob including Joseph's children Ephraim and Manasseh and the words that Jacob speak upon them becomes the character of each of the tribes of Israel for Ephraim and his descendants Manasseh and his descendants Dan and his descendants every single word Jacob spoke upon them became the characteristics of the individual tribes which come together and form Israel. So all the 12 tribes of Israel stood by Jacob in his dying bed and the words that Jacob spoke upon them became their character, became their physical manifestation on the physical Israel. So you look at Israel as a nation, the tribes in them have got blessings that must follow them so that they can actually become triumphant in their lives. The fact of the matter which I want you to look at is this. Jacob's words, which is supposed to follow the people to make them great, was standing upon a God of his father Isaac and his grandfather Abraham. But I'm saying that Jacob stood on the grace and the gift of the God that he serves from his father Isaac and his grandfather Abraham. So that for the words to become manifested, practically demonstrated in the most of the Israel people, then Israel 
must also stand upon the foundation upon which their, for, their father stood on to bless them. If Israel move one inch from the foundation of the God of Jacob, through whom Jacob blessed Israel, then all the blessings of, the, of Jacob will be useless. You must walk in the same line with the person who blesses you. So if my father Jacob has blessed me on the basis of the God of Abraham, I also who receive the blessing must acknowledge the God of Abraham and walk within the principles of the God of Abraham for the blessings to be effective. That's how God has made the law. God cannot wake up and speak blessings on Satan's children. They believe in Satan. They follow the satanic way. And so God cannot specifically come to a child of the devil and talk to him and bless him. It's not going to work. So if I am a child of Jacob and the blessings of Jacob will follow me, then I must stand upon the same foundation that my father stood on to bless me. If I move away, the blessings of God will not have effect upon my life. So if we are now the spiritual Israelites, and therefore we have become heirs of the Abrahamic, Isaac, and Jacob blessings, upon what basis, foundation, did we become spiritual Israelites? Apostle Paul has given us information. Now that you have believed in Christ, you are now heads of Abraham. So the foundation of we becoming spiritual Israelites to attain the heads of Abraham is on the basis that we have Christ inside our lives. So if now the character of Christ is not manifested in our lives, we have no basis to become spiritual Israelites. And therefore, the Abrahamic blessings will not work inside our lives. So we have to come to realize that the blessings that Jacob is given, which is also for us, because we are Abrahamic seed, is based on the fact that every born again believer must remain on the foundation of Jesus Christ. The qualities of Christ must be found in us to give us the legitimacy to claim the Abrahamic blessings. Because if you look at the scripture very carefully, any time Israel moves away from the foundation of Jehovah, which their father stood on to bless them, Israel doesn't get blessings. But they were blessed through all the children of Jacob. They were blessed. But the foundation Jacob stood to bless them was Jehovah. So anytime the country of Israel in their life move away from the foundation Jehovah which blessed them, they don't get the progress that they need. They don't get it. Because you must be in a certain position in order for the automatic door to open for you. Those of you who know automatic doors, there is a sensor. When you are standing here, even though the door is wide, and you are standing here and the sensor does not see you, the door will not open. So when you are standing here and the sensor sees you, then the door will open. The sensor is the foundation upon which God blessed you, upon which you became an Israelite. That is Jesus Christ. The quality of God, the life of Christ opens the door for blessings in your life. So anytime Israel moves away from where the sensor is, the blessing cease. You look at scripture, the blessings, it ceases. Even though God has spoken the blessings, but they do not get it anymore. So all the words of Jacob towards his children before he dies was going to have effect on the basis of how they relate to the power that followed Jacob to speak. It is God's power, Jehovah's power, his grandfather's power, his father's power. So if the children are going to have power to follow them, to have the blessings executed upon their lives, they must remain in the same point. It's confirmed in Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 23. But this thing commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice, 
and I will be your God, and ye shall be my people. And walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well unto you. For their father Jacob, who brought Israel together, stood on this God Jehovah and his belief in the God of Jehovah to speak these prophetic words. So if Israel also now want to continue in the field of grace, in the field of wonderful things and, and in, in instructions and things are happening to them, blessings are happening to them, then they must continue to obey the same God their father stood on to bless them. So God in all the days of Israel has been remembering Israel, your progress in life depends on your obedience on me. The progress I gave to Abraham was that he became my best friend. Everything I tell Abraham, Abraham did it. It came to Isaac. Isaac became a good person because whatever he heard from his father, Isaac repeated the same thing. And when Jacob came from Pandanaram in the hands in the land of 20 years of staying in a land where they didn't know me, he stood by me. And the moment he entered into Beersheba, he built an altar for me. So all your forefathers, Israel, has been obedient to me. And that is the basis why I am using them as a prophetic word to you. So when you leave that foundation, you cannot get my blessings. So God is telling Israel one more time, if you will obey my voice and walk in all my ways, it shall be well unto you as what? As your father spoke concerning your life when you read the line from Jacob, Isaac, and Abraham, the word there is obedience. 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 It is through this obedient power that Jacob became prophetic. So if at the end of the day, I cannot also follow the obedient line, then whatever prophetic word that is said upon me, will become worse. So God, in his infinite wisdom, every blessed day, made sure that the priests who became priests in Israel will remind Israel of their obedience to God for the words of their forefathers to come to pass in them. Leviticus, you see Leviticus chapter 26 verse 3. If ye walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, this is the word of God to the priest telling the people who come to the temple every blessed day. People who come to the temple like we have come here. So God is using the priest, the Levites, to speak to the Israels as they come to the temple and said, God said, if you walk in my statutes and keep my commandments and do them, then verse 4 come, will come to pass. Talking about the great blessings that God gave to Israel through Jacob. Then I will give you rain in due season and the land shall yield her increase and the trees of the field shall yield their fruits it means that if verse 3 doesn't come on equivalent to Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 23 if it doesn't work these things that you profess upon yourself will not work because the blessings is depending upon the foundation upon which our forefathers stood to bless us. And that is Jehovah, obedient to God. Until our forefather Abraham became the friend of God. So if we are also going to say that now the blessings of Abraham is ours, then we must walk in the ways of God. We must believe God's word. We must actually act in the way that God wants us so that our rain will fall in our room. So that uh, our, 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 our land will increase in our room and that our trees will yield fruits in our room. It's a private matter. It's not a collective form. So every individual must have his own yielding fruits. Every individual must have his own land increasing. Every individual must have his own rain in due season. Then when we come together, we become the blessings of Abraham. It's now, important. 
I cannot live a life of Christ for you. I cannot. The only benefit you when I live the life of Christ, which is for you, is when I intercede. Because I'm in the right standing with God, God will have mercy and forgive you. That's the only benefit. But for you to get blessings from God directly to you, you need to live your own life. Nothing that I can give you to drink or to wear that will bring blessings to your life. It will not work. I can intercede for you for your weakness to become strong so that you can go before the Lord and function as somebody who stands on the foundation upon which Jacob stood to bless Israel so that the blessings of Israel will come. Your rain must fall, your land must increase, your trees must yield fruit by yourself. And it's private, in your private room. Praise the Lord. So it is not a wholesale. Every individual who have given your life to Christ, you gave your life to Christ not as a wholesale. Some of you gave your life to Christ when some people were not even born. So it is not a wholesale thing. It's a private thing. You were initiated into the spiritual kingdom of Israel on the day Christ came to live in your life. And you didn't consult anybody. So it's not a group thing anymore. It's an individual thing. And when an individual stands upon the basis of God's word and become obedient to God's word and God reigns upon their life and we are all doing the same thing, then the rain will fall upon all us and all of us will say the same thing because we are experiencing it from the same source. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. You have to have this understanding because the world Christianity is thinking that when the pastor, the prophet speak upon me, when the pastor give me some oil, when the pastor give me some clothing, when the pastor grew this, then it shall be well with my life. And then they hear the voice of the pastor, the pastor prophesy upon them, the prophet prophet, the prophet prophet prophesy upon them, and they go on and live their old useless lives. It will not work. It will not work. And I want to say before the Lord, anybody on earth who would live a useless life and get blessings because a prophet has spoken to him, that blessing doesn't come from God. Oh God has blessed me. Prophet, uh, prophesy for me, prophesy on me. I'm sending 200 kilos of, 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 of cocaine to, to, to Canada. I prophesy, it must go through. Then you come and give money, ah, whatever it is. Right? You are useless. It's not God. We have to be very careful. The basis upon which Jacob blessed Israel and blessed his only, all his 12 children was upon the basis of Jehovah, upon his obedience to the God of his father. And if we also will remain the same way, we must be based upon obedience of the God who we are claiming we serve. Obedience is what that produced the rain. Obedience is what produced the land to increase. For Isaac wanted to leave Israel, the land, and go to Egypt. Because all the land in the area was bad. There was famine everybody's cassava didn't grow everybody's oil or uh, corn didn't grow the wheat is spoiled so isaac said i'm going to egypt just like my father abraham then god told him despite all the famine and all the problem isaac i god i tell you stay here and isaac obeyed the moment there was obedience and Isaac cleared the same land that was spoiled. According to scripture, all the Philistine land didn't yield anything. Mm. Isaac's own yielded something. Man. Obedience is what brings the power. Obedience is what brings the, the power. The disciplined life in Christ is what brings the blessings of Abraham to people. So you can't come to church and behave anyhow outside there. We don't force people to worship God. We lead you so that you yourself can know the benefit in God. Because the more obedient and the more disciplined you are, the more your rain will fall. The more your land will increase. The more your tree will what? 
will yield fruit. God hasn't got grandchildren. Hmm? No, God has children. Everybody must have contact with God. So that you see that the prophetic words of Jacob was supposed to move Israel as a country forward. Because individual tribes, by the blessings of Jacob and by the words of Jacob, they must move forward. They must increase. They must see things. So Israel, by their adherence to God's word, are destined for progress, forward moving. But any time Israel fail from standing on the foundation, they don't move forward anymore. A representation of all of us. If we do not abide in God and live by God's word, Leviticus chapter 26 verse 4 does not happen to us. Even though it has been prophetically spoken to us because we are seed of Abraham, but because we are not living the life of our brother Abraham in obedience, we don't get it. So in Jeremiah chapter 7, which we read, which God is said, walk in my way and it will be well for you. When you go to the 24th verse, we see that Israel at a certain point in time is pushing God away. So we see Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 24. But they, Israel, hearken not nor incline their ear, but they walked in the counsel and in the imagination of their evil hearts. They became self-controlled by themselves. Israel is supposed to walk by the details of God's word. They must be obedient to God, but now they have neglected God's word and they are living their own lives according to the way their heart feels. And instead of them moving forward by obedience, they saw that they were moving backwards and not forwards. So every day, sometimes I tell you, we are the custodians of our own faults, of our own, of our own failure. Because our obedience, I have told you several years ago, and I continue to tell you, it's not consistent. It's not consistent. 2021, praise God, January, wonderful, Tuesday. When we reach a certain point, you see people retarding from God, retarding from God. Israel did the same thing. Even though the priests have warned them several times, if you walk in my ways, the rain will come, the land will increase, your fruit will yield. But sometimes when the fruit comes in abundance, we become glutons and we forget God. So then we begin to go backwards and God is saying that because they, you did not hearken unto me, you are walking in your own counsel. What cast a trail while some you have go for say, my say. Now you own cars. You have so many women. So at the end of the day, when we tell you about God's word, you think it is useless. You will go backwards. You will go backwards. It is God's law. Israel went backwards instead of moving forward. They are supposed to move forward and see progress and give praise to God. And people will see them and magnify God. But here they are. They have gone into their own council. What they tell them, what the uh, what the social media tell them is what they do. What these people, the song that people of the world say, that's what they sing. They come to check the Aquarius says they go to where they are, Shatawali. This is what is happening. Aquarius says, I'm, I'm using, the, I'm not using that for an example. I'm only using it as an example. But some people do it. They are quite so sanctimonious. Abide with me, abide with me. And then you meet them on the street and they're there, about them, about them, about them. So you see that they, they are not consistent in their lives. The word of God and the power of God must rule you everywhere. The song said, he was with me everywhere. He knows my every care. The Holy Ghost is with you everywhere. You gave your life to Christ. God gave you the Holy Ghost. He didn't give the Holy Ghost in the church alone. Everywhere. 
He wanted to know. Everywhere he is with me, everywhere he knows my every care. The Holy Ghost must be with us and our obedience must be consistent because the Holy Ghost is there. But we shut our ears and our eyes towards God. Yes, sir. And instead of us going forward, we are going backwards. Example, many, many, many years ago, we were young. A sister's husband died. I was a pastor of a crack church, a church which is now in Banana Inn. I was a pastor there. So we are going to the sister with two deacons to go and console her for the husband who is dead. So my lead deacon went forward and laid his hands upon the sister. And I thought he was going to say consoling words. Before I heard, no woman, no cry. <laughs> no woman, I say, ha. Oh, brother. And see, what could we now, Bob Mullen could say? It's true, brother. Some of the things I meet, I say, oh, God, why did I bring this man here? <laughs> no, no, you are still in the church. All oh, your life is Bob Mullen. As a church member, we are going to help the person that sister is crying and sobbing. Mm. You are going to meet a sister as a deacon. I'm expecting something wonderful. Oh, woman, no cry. No, woman, no cry. What is nonsense is this? Oh, so, 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 so we have to be very careful. We have to be extremely careful. The Spirit of God was everywhere. Everywhere we go, we must be consistent with the law of God. So that we shall move forward and not backwards. We have to be very careful. So we go to back to Lamentation chapter 8, chapter 1. Lamentation chapter 1. We are reading the eighth verse. Because we see that we are moving backwards. And we realize we, 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 we have to realize that God's blessings and we becoming an Israelite is supposed to move us forward. When God, through Jacob, spoke to Dan, Dan's action must produce results. The rider on the horse must fall down. So when it reached a point where the rider is not falling down, that means uh, the biting of the, heat of the horse is not working. Jerusalem had grievously sinned. Therefore, she is removed. All that honored her despise her because they have seen her nakedness. Yea, she sigheth and turneth backwards. You want headache to go. You will pray for 10 years before the headache will go. Nothing works. Because you have actually moved from the foundation of obedience upon which the presence of Abraham was pronounced upon Israel, for which you are now the spiritual Israelite. So you have gone astray from God. And instead of moving forward, you are going backwards. And everybody see that things are not working well with you. Your life does not produce the praise to God anymore. She sigheth and turneth backward. And everybody... I've seen your uselessness mm. because of your character, because of your behavior, because of your non-adherence to obedience to God's word. Nakedness is shame. Nobody wants to let his nakedness on the street of the poor. Nobody does that. So you walk naked on the streets of Tema, on the streets of Tulaku, and your mind is correct. You are not correct. So when you see spiritual word, nakedness, and I say, Jerusalem is moving far away from God. The mind state is wrong. The choices that Jerusalem is making is a wrong Jerusalem. He says, he has grievously sinned. Because the choices that he has made has made them go wrong. And their nakedness is out there. The shamefulness is there. And when she herself sits down and sighs, she realizes that things are not working well. I'm going backwards. Sometimes you realize it. You run around, ah, you come to the same place. You run around, ah, you come to the same place. You and your wife and your children, the same place. Every day, the same place. Because of your inconsistency towards the obedience of God's word. You go back to verse, 11, verse 9. Verse 9, and you see that Dan should have been, should bite the horse, and the horse must feel the bite so that 
the rider will fall down. The rider is the enemy. But now because you have failed God, her filthiness mm -hmm. is in her skirts. You cover things up. She remembers not her last end. Therefore, she came down wonderfully. That's Jerusalem. She had no comforter. God has left him. Oh, Lord, behold my affliction. What is your affliction? My enemy has magnified himself. The enemy is becoming bigger more. Because I am done. Done hides and bites. But my biting is not working. The enemy, the rider must fall down. But now here, the enemy is now magnifying himself against you. We are the cause of our own downfall, sisters and brothers. Israel, Jerusalem must be moved forward. They must conquer the enemy. Now the enemy now is magnifying himself. And he himself has seen, behold, I have affliction. What is your problem, sister? What is your problem, sister? Brother? things are becoming worse the enemy is magnifying himself against you because your prayers does not work because it doesn't produce you don't live on the righteousness of God it's a dangerous state thou hast forsaken me saith the Lord thou art gone backwards we have read it therefore will I stretch out my hand against thee and destroy thee. Listen to the last word. I am weary of repenting. Now, whatever I want to do to you, I will do to you. One casaso. I repent, I repent, my CC repentance. No, I'm I'm weary of it. I see your tears, but men who now it doesn't push me anymore because of your persistent. You do it, I forgive you. You do it, I forgive you. And then at a certain point of time, you have taken advantage of my leniency so that you continue to disobey me and I will forgive you. No, I am wary of your repentance. If a Christian reached that state, that's all. You are in problem. Apostle Paul said about it. Should we sin that grace will abound? No. God said, I'm wary of your repentance. It is sometimes, you know, you say, yes, the punishment I will give you, and I'm you go through it because you have cried, 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 cried. Every day I forgive you. Every day I forgive you. Every, every now you have become permanent forgiveness, and therefore you do your permanent fooling. And if you are permanent fooling, then I want to tell you that I, God, at a certain point in time, I am wary of repenting. You go back to the Amplified Version, and he said, uh, when God said, I will, I will not look at it, I will, I will make sure that what you deserve, I give you. I'll give you, it is he who is punishing you. It's not Satan. You have rejected and forsaken me, says the Lord. You keep going in reverse. Therefore, I have stretched out my hand against you and destroy you. I am wary of relenting concerning your punishment. No matter how much you pray with the blood coming from your ears, I will punish you because you are consistently. We must, we must be careful. Though. I explain this thing to you so that you can understand God. Sometimes the problems we are facing is our own doing. It's our own doing, brothers and sisters. Confirmed by Apostle Paul, Romans chapter 6, verse 1. Romans chapter 6, verse 1. Because Apostle Paul look at that. Grace, 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 grace. In, a, in, a, in, 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 in South Africa, there's a church in the end time message. Oh, because grace is, they allow smoking in the church. Because grace is, brothers exchange their wives on bed. Oh, grace, grace, grace. 
That's how they have turned grace into stupidity, into demonic, satanic church. So shall we say then, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Say, God forbid, verse 2. Say, God forbid, no. Why shall we who have been dead to sin continue to live in sin? These words of Jeremiah 15 verse 6 is the most dangerous spiritual state that any Christian believer will find himself. As in, you soon soon will see you. Sometimes in the spiritual realm, he doesn't want to hear. He said, I am weary. I've seen the tears in different colors so many times. And so now these tears, whether it's crocodile tear or salmon tear, I don't care. It's a very spiritual, dangerous state in the life of man. It happens to all people, including pastors, leaders. We have become settled in our rebellion until we have forgotten God. And God has also forgotten us. So even though we are pastors, we pray, it doesn't work. We intercede, it doesn't work. Because God has heard the repentance. Ah, now he's wary of repentance. Barbara. When you see a mother or a parent going into a room and pulling her own son or his own son to the police, take him, go and put him in prison. Her own parent. That's your dad. I will find out See, see, our parents, you know. I am the father of the son. I'm the daughter. I'm, I'm the mother of the son. But one fan unko, one fan unko to no see any answer. Ya ka 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 abu free on sasa. What me any hypertension? Into one fan unko to me any hypertension no umbra down. When you see a parent making that gesture, that means say the boy has reached a point of no return. Why try be careful? <laughs> Praise the Lord. So spiritually, we must come to a level where we don't come to this portion. Consistency, obedient to God, is more important than everyday repenting. I told you Apostle Paul made a statement and said, we don't want to go back and lay the foundation of repentance again, but we are now moving forward. So we must actually have a character that God will give us the grace to be persistent in obedience in order for that effect to follow our lives. Amen. Amen. Shall we bow down our heads? Father, we bring praise unto your name for these lessons that you have given us through the years. This last one, we bring praise unto your name. Let us enter into our hearts. And as we always cry to you, give us grace to live consistently an obedient life. Lift us above temptation. Deliver us from evil. So that every blessed day we shall be consistent to obey you. So that you don't say that you are weary of our repentance. Into your hands we commit our lives. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless. Amen.